Hola, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the AB Calculus 4-2 Classwork Extra Practice Solutions on Increasing and Decreasing Intervals. On this problem, we want to know the values for which this function right here is increasing. So to figure that out, we just need to figure out where f prime for this thing is positive. Let's start by finding the derivative. That'll be using the power rule here, 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. And that 7 just gets uh, turned into a 0 and differentiated away. So we need to figure out where this thing equals 0. We can start by factoring a 3 out of everything. That'll leave us with x squared plus 2x minus 3 inside the parentheses, which we can then factor into, let's see, two things that multiply to negative 3 and add up to 2. That'd be negative 1 and positive 3. Uh, so then we can say that this is going to be true at x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. Those are our two critical values that we're now going to do a little sign analysis around. So here's my f prime number line. I've got negative 3. I've got 1. And now let me test some things in each of these three intervals. Let's test out negative 4. That gives us a, a negative times a negative, so that's a positive. 0 is a good in-betweener number here. That gives us a negative times a positive, which is negative. And then finally, let's try a 2 over here. That's a positive and a positive, so positive overall. We wanted increasing intervals, so that's going to be wherever f prime is positive. That's going to be on the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, and also from positive 1 to positive infinity. And let's see here. This is equivalent to saying x is less than 3 or greater than 1, less than negative 3 or greater than 1. Uh, so that's going to be choice C. For this problem, we have this uh, function f with a derivative given by this other function, f prime. We want to know on what intervals is f decreasing. So this is one of those problems that looks a lot worse than it actually is. For one thing, if you were thinking you needed quotient rule, uh, you actually already have f prime here. So you don't need to take another derivative. We're just trying to find where f is decreasing, and we already know its derivatives. So we just need to figure out where this f prime expression is negative. Now, the next thing we're going to do then is set this equal to 0 to find critical values. And those are the only critical values we really need to worry about here. Normally, with a fraction like this, we would worry about things that make the derivative undefined DNE. Um, but this denominator here is always going to be positive. So we don't even have to worry about that. It's just where we get 0 for the whole derivative. And that's going to be where the numerator equals 0. Well, negative 2x equals 0 when x is 0. So that's our sole critical value that we need to test around. Uh, so let's make a little number line here. And this is an f prime line. I've got my critical value of 0 on there. And now I'm just going to try out a few numbers. Uh, let me try out negative 1 first. Uh, now, again, this denominator is always going to come out positive because it's inside of squared parentheses. So no matter what happens in here, you're always going to be squaring it and making it positive. So that means it's all up to the numerator. And in the numerator, we have negative 2 times whatever you're plugging in. So negative 2 times negative 1 gives us a positive. And to the right of 0, let's try positive 1. Negative 2 times that gives us a negative. We wanted decreasing intervals. So that's going to be where f prime is negative. So we can say we're decreasing on the interval from 0 to infinity, which is going to be answer choice A. On this problem, we're given the function x squared times e to the x. We want to know where this function is decreasing. So we need to take the derivative and figure out where f prime is negative. To do that, we are going to need the product rule. So let me set up the box and ribbon. I've got factors of x squared and also e to the x. And their derivatives are 2x and, well, e to the x again. Multiplying that back out with the ribbon, we've got 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. And we want to figure out where this thing equals 0. I would say undefined, but this is always going to be defined because it's just polynomials and exponentials. So to figure out where this equals 0, let's start by factoring out an x and an e to the x. So factoring out of that, that out of there, uh, that turns my first term into just 2. And this other term is going to be x. So 2 plus x, and all of that equals 0. Things that zero this out. Well, taking a look at each factor, this first factor gets zeroed out if I plug 0 in for x. So x equals 0 is one critical value. And this parentheses is gone if I have negative 2 for that x value. So these are our two critical values we're now going to test around. Let me set up my f prime number line. I've got negative 2 
and 0. And testing something from each interval, let's try negative 3 for this first one. Uh, now taking a look at this stuff here, e to the x is one of the factors, but e to the x always comes out positive no matter what. Um, so it really is just going to be down to the x and the 2 plus x. Plugging in negative 3, that makes this negative, and this is also going to be negative, so positive overall. Plugging in now a negative 1 in between negative 2 and 0, we've got a negative and a positive comes out negative. And something bigger than 0, like 1, this is going to be positive, positive, all positive. We want it decreasing intervals, so that's wherever f prime is negative. That's going to be between negative 2 and 0. So that gives us answer choice B. For this problem, we've got the derivative g prime of a function g. This derivative is continuous and has exactly two zeros, and some values are shown in the table up here. So we want to figure out where the g function is decreasing, which interval that happens on. Um, so in general, if you want to know where g is decreasing, you're trying to figure out where g prime is negative. And our only information here is the table. So looking at this table, we see we have some negative values of g prime between negative 2 and positive 2, right? We hit 0 for g prime at both of those, and in between, it's negative. Now, the million-dollar question is, are we guaranteed that these are the only negative values? Or could there be other negative g prime values lurking somewhere else here? And for this, they told us that we had only two zeros and that the function is the, the derivative here, g prime, is continuous. Well, that means that these are your two zeros right here, that they, they gave us those. So there's nowhere else that this uh, g prime is hitting the x-axis, crossing the x-axis, or anything. So once it starts being negative, it's got to stay negative until it gets back to zero, and then it can cross the x-axis. And it's continuous, so this thing can't kind of warp around and take on negative values without us knowing about it. Um, so basically, we're saying that this function is going to be negative. G prime is negative between negative 2 and 2. So no hidden sign changes. G prime is negative between negative 2 and 2. That means that G, the original function, must be decreasing on the interval from negative 2 to 2, which is going to be answer choice A. On this problem, the first derivative of a g function is given by g prime right here, cosine of pi x squared. On the interval from negative 0.5 to 1.5, we want to know on which interval is g decreasing. Now the key here, first two keys, one is a, this is a calculator question, so you can do most of this on the calculator. The other is they already gave you the derivative of g. They gave you g prime right here. So if this were a free response, you could just start by writing g prime of x equals 0 and solving that on the calculator. Um, whether or not you write it, we are going to have to solve it on the calculator. So here's my f prime, or g prime actually, cosine of pi x squared. And for my window, I'm going to use what they gave me here, negative 0.5 to 1.5. So negative 0.5 for x min, 1.5 for x max. And then we'll do zoom zero, zoom fit, and see what this thing looks like. And of course, you, you are hopefully in radians mode because we do all of calculus in radians mode. So we say that we're crossing the x-axis twice, here and here. Let's figure out what both of those spots are. So let me do second trace, option two. And let me find this first zero. So we press enter once to the left, once to the right, one more time. That's about 0.707. So there's my graph. Here's my first x value where we're crossing, and I'm going to call this a. I'm not really going to use it too much after I find it in this problem, but I don't feel like writing it again, so now I can just refer to it as a. All right, let's find the other zero. So second trace, option two, moving to the right a little bit more, closer to that intersection. We've got one to the left, enter to the right, enter one more time for 1.225, which I'm going to refer to hereafter after as b. We want to know where g is decreasing. So that's going to be wherever g prime is negative. g prime is negative on the interval from a to b, which is to say on the interval from 0.707 to 1.225. So then choice c is what we need for this. For this problem, we have this function y equals g of x that's differentiable and increasing for all real numbers. What interval is this function increasing for? Uh, this function here, g of x cubed minus 6x squared. 
So we don't know what the G function initially does, but hey, we're going to go ahead and plug in this other polynomial and then see what happens. All right, well, if we want to know where this thing is increasing, we need to know what G prime of all this stuff looks like. So that's going to be using a chain rule here. We're going to have the derivative of the outer function, which is just the G function. So we're literally going to write G prime of x cubed minus 6x squared. This is going to give us y prime here, times the derivative of the stuff inside. So 3x squared minus 12x. And now we need to figure out where this is either undefined or zero. Well, they said that this function g is differentiable. Um, so that means that g prime exists everywhere. It may not be continuous, but it exists. So we're not looking for places where g prime is dNe. So that means that we can just set this equal to zero, and those are the only critical values we're going to care about here. OK, now to make this a little easier, we can say a little more about g prime. They told us that g itself was increasing for all real numbers. That means no matter what I plug into the, the derivative of g, g prime, I should get a positive number back. Well, here we go. We're plugging all this stuff in. Um, that means that g prime of x cubed minus 6x squared must be greater than 0. If g is increasing, then plugging anything into g prime should give me a positive number. All right, then. That means that uh, since g prime can't equal 0, since it's greater than 0, it really is just down to this 3x squared minus 12x stuff. Figure out where that equals 0, I can take out a 3x. Um, so setting this equal to 0, taking out a 3x, that'll leave me with x minus 4 inside. And we see that we have critical values of 0 and 4. I'm going to go ahead and graph those on my number line now. This is my y prime number line here. So again, g prime, we know that that always is going to be a positive number, so it doesn't really enter into our sign analysis here. So we're really just testing out uh, this little factorization of 3x squared minus 12x. So we've got 0 and 4, those are my critical values. Plugging in a number to the left of 0, like negative 1, that's going to make us come out negative and negative, so positive overall. Let me plug in a 1 between 0 and 4. That's a positive times a negative is negative. And finally, number bigger than 4, like 5, positive, positive gives us another positive. We want increasing intervals. So that's wherever y prime is positive. That's from negative infinity to 0, and also from 4 to positive infinity, which is going to give us answer choice A.